That's cute. Hello and welcome <laughs> to a brand new podcast of Spittin' Loads with Zach and Tony. <laughs> yeah, Spittin' Loads. What do you think of that name? The, the uh, nickname for the show. It's not really Spittin' Loads yet. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to do both before we're done. We so. thought about that an hour and a half ago. Do, uh, do both Zach and Tony or Spit and Load? Spit, oh, I'm spit your load. Uh, All of the above. Well, welcome to the Zach and Tony show. Not yet named Spit and Load, but it uh, might be. We're testing it. We're testing yeah. it. Uh, Worked on me. We'll see who we're going to offend with it. Probably yeah. everyone. Not uh, Chaz. But uh, I'm this close to leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I just opened a beer and I might leave. Well, our guest today is Alec. Uh, no, Chaz Hearn. Yeah, he messed it up. <laughs> I anyways. messed it up. I guess they wrote Chaz it down and everything of. Chaz Hearn and Alec, Alex, Alex, Alex Gilowitz. Gilowitz, man, you got the last name. Chaz not Hearn and name. Alex Gilowitz, who just came out with their new EP, the One Year EP. Uh, and yeah, we're excited to have you here. Uh, we're the... getting better at having people on who aren't our friends previously. Yeah. Um, I have no emotional connection to you two. No, whatsoever. Not, not well, whatsoever. I know you. I from, have shared a beer with you. You so. shared beer, and I don't know if I Maybe should say the hug. other thing on <laughs> online. But yeah, hugs. You guys share some cocks. Definitely shared a hug. <laughs> <but yeah. laughs> uh, maybe maybe a little weed. Participate in, in some of the liberated. Um, Inebriant. Oh, <laughs> we could say that. Cool nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing too hard. <laughs> nothing too hard. No. No. But uh, but I've I've been to many. Uh, I guess you could call them folk musician parties because of my girlfriend Liz Chittister and and I'm there. Love and, Liz. And, and yeah, and you're you're def you were de- you quickly became one of my favorite people to talk to. Hey, shocks. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> That's good. Because because uh, you just. Uh, cheery and uh, normal. Normal. <laughs> yeah. It, art, the artistic community tends to be ripe with the worst. Results. Like a uh, lot of a lot of interesting characters yeah, that are I, hard I, to break through. When you walked up, too. I was like, "All right, I immediately got a good vibe off of you." Oh, that's good. Uh, it's true, though. I I just can't stand. Uh, and I'm not gonna. I'm trying not to say this word as often. I'm trying not to say the word hipster because uh, yeah. I use it for everything, and I and people could actually mm-hmm. use it on me. Uh, but I I. That, but the artistic community in general, music, acting, uh, is filled with a bunch of d-bags who feel yeah, like they kinda. are they are are of more importance than everybody else, and it's very judgmental. Like either it's kind of like you're not cool enough in a way. Yeah. There's always this not cool enough vibe, uh, which is um, really disheartening, especially when 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 you get out of college. Yeah, you know, it's it's like well, it's just everybody's just judging the shit out of everybody. We're supposed to have this. <laughs> Really free flowing community of artistic people who's not you know, who's it's supposed to be supportive. Cause yeah, it's supposed to be. I mean, at you in, in art, you inevitably are collaborating in the sense that you're essentially stealing someone else's ideas True. and using them in your implementing them into your own way, right? So it's like you might as well at least be open to influence. In, yeah, we're talking, Inf- about, we're talking about influence. influence yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not stealing; it's influence. Well, sure. and maybe it's your career or your life, but isn't it supposed to be fun too? Yes, mm-hmm. I mean that's why we got yep. into it in the first place. Sure, mm-hmm. I think the worst are the people who are really picky about what genre. Yeah. They play. You're like, oh, what do you play? Like, I tell people folk music. I'm sure, sure. you could call it other things. But sure. Just some people who say like, oh, you know, you have a really good folk sound. So, ah, it's not folk. It's not folk. It's California indie alternative. <laughs> yeah. Pop. Yeah. So I get always out of here, man. I I know. I get you. I always say pop rock for uh, Man Called Noon. That's fine. Yeah. And that's right. a good. That's a good one. That's... And but some people like they're like just pop rock, and I'm like, well, I can... you know, I don't. I could go. I could go on and on. I, I could. I could, I could be like, listen. I could stand here and suck my dick for you, but I'm not, I it's think got, it's got a lot of little blues rock as well, and <laughs> and there's certainly you know right. some Springsteen rock and some big. But you know, I could yeah. go all day about about Man Called Noon because there's and you as well when I was listening earlier. Yeah, um, very pleasant. Oh, thank you. Thank I, pleasant you. Very, is very pleasant. a great. I heard word for the first for time it. today. Oh well, um, how about optimistic folk? How about that? Yeah, there you go. Nice. There you there go. You go. My know. the band that I, big old titties. You saw them. I love uh, those big old titties. <laughs> Who doesn't? Um, <laughs> I came into your show knowing. Well, I do love big old titties. Right. So this band is called Big Old Titties. So right. Right. I was the one screaming big old titties. I I know after it, most of the song. It made me feel pretty good. What good. it's How a. Bad. It, but and you, and you got down in the best way. I think now that you and James do. Uh, it's the. Uh, 
Dork funk. Dork funk, Ooh, but also yeah, promoting it as the label. bots, too. Because yeah. you can't be plastering big old titties everywhere. Even True. though we're right. all very, like, we know it's a joke. It's right. it's it, it's still better to go B.O.T.'s. Yes. But not to that D-bag at the fucking Metro show, no. apparently, who was trying to pick up your girlfriend with proving how liberal he was in a room full of liberal people. That's, like, what, that's what it felt like. And you may know, you may have met this person. Apparently he's oh, a Cowboy Records guy. I don't. Oh, I don't sure. even remember his name, so it's okay. Um, <laughs> but he was drunk, and yeah. he was chatting Liz up, um, and she mentioned uh, the name, the big old titties name to him, and he sure. got he like it. It, uh, it rubbed sword, him the wrong way. It rubbed him the wrong yeah. way. Exactly. Perfect. It grossed him out, and the girl is the one. Right in, in the band. The, the, it, yeah. yeah, the girl, a central figure of the band, yeah. is, is explaining it to him. Yeah, and he's like, "Well, that's just." It's not socially acceptable to him. Something it's a type, like that. Of, type of a thing. But like, I said, well, we could call the band James Mano and the Big Floppy Dongs if you want. <laughs> That's true. I that, mean, you know. And but that, that wouldn't be that true. That made him mad too, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't at all be true. At the least tiny, <laughs> shriveled wieners. <laughs> <laughs> that has a nice ring to it, too. Uh, it kind of does. Chodes. Uh, chodes. Ooh. I was listening to Little the Joe Rogan experience the other day, and he brought up a good question. What the fuck is a chode? And I thought I knew what a chode was, but this was like an hour and a half conversation they had about it. Uh, I believe a chode, speaking of small shriveled penises, which I have. Uh, you have spoke of or you have one? No, I, I have one and have spoke of. Uh, they, uh, aren't they just half penises? <laughs> I think, yeah, they're wider than it is long, yes. which I don't oh. know how that makes sense. Um, That's, I don't know devastating you, you don't have a chode but you have a tiny shriveled so there, that is a difference listen, i can i can pull it out right now listeners but I'm, listen this is not that that type of podcast call Please. to action for the listeners if chodes. you have a chode give us a dick pic <laughs> <laughs> the chodes is a great band name though it's got the a good cho- ring to it, it I, yeah I, I, it just wish if people didn't know if people didn't know yeah. what it was it's a british play, punk band you play only, like a, yeah. yes. or you play like nursing homes you're like hey guys we're the chodes <laughs> It means love for everything. It's it's like, oh, of... well, I'm a chode, too. <laughs> it's a type of flower. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's a beautiful type of wide flower. Uh, Short, sprouts It's in the wider than it is long, uh, this flower. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, let's talk about something else besides chodes. For, for the love of God. For the love of God. <laughs> Every conversation ends up with chodes. <laughs> also, know. though, when you were like, call the action, listeners send uh, pictures. pictures of chodes. If a couple of years from now, I have, I have no doubt that we'll all be successful. Yeah, of uh, course. And, and if this podcast is successful, which it will be, right. uh, that's something we probably shouldn't say because I bet we will be getting emails of chodes. Just, just filthy penises. Yeah. That's Wait. how we'll know we made it. I think so. When you get your first email of the dick pic, I think I think so. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I'm looking for that dick pic. You just gotta um, ask for it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> call to action. Back, back on chodes. Back on chodes. <laughs> right back, back on chodes. In there. Anyway, speaking of chodes, Chaz. Uh, <laughs> oh, your yeah. new blah blah blah. Uh, your new album, the one year EP. Uh, sure. Start the conversation. I want to. I want to make a good ten or fifteen minutes about you and us talking about and promoting your album. Uh, yeah. When did you start the process? How did you start the process? What the, What is the album about? So well, go ahead. The goal was to do it over the course of a year, and it started right after I finished my debut album, Core Dynamo, in March of 2015. And then that's not the full title, is it? Though it's called The Legend of Core Dynamo. I was going to say, I was like, yeah. there's something. There's, it's, a, there's it's like fantastic, a, like a comic booky <laughs> type twist. Oh, totally. Yeah. And so I like to make albums that the whole thing is a theme. So it's like the idea is like each song adds to it, like the parts of a song add to a song. So I think it's nice to make it more intentional because I was really struck by my uncle who always says, why would people want to shuffle an album? You're supposed to listen to it in order. It's in that order for a reason. So that'd be cool to make an album flow with one bigger idea. And then if you listen in order, you get to pick up ideas as it goes. And I was like, well, you know, the seasons could work as a way to do it. And then... I Vivaldi. really wanted, yeah, the season, and, and I wanted to write a non-corny love song. I was listening to mm. "Wouldn't It Be Nice" by the Beach Boys, and I'm like, that's still just like one of the best ones. And the, and the musicianship too is, of is, course. I mean, like helps. it's it's like a you know full orchestra, and the uh, the vocals are amazing. But I just love 
the lyrics are not like I'd walk across the world for you or mm-hmm. I'd die for you. He's not saying that. He's just saying like, you know, I, I'm really looking forward to sharing a house with you and going to sleep in the same bed as you and all that. I think that's sweet. So I was like, what if I focus on just the day-to-day stuff? Yeah. And so it's just like the idea of like a couple that goes off on their own and just spends a year, just the two of the, each other. So it's like a storybook. And then uh, it's also talking about how much we love the different seasons and going outside and all that stuff. So I think, uh, and maybe you'll agree with me, uh, but I also challenged myself before to write a really good love song of not a, not and I think this this way doesn't have to be a specific genre in either. I think it, within the, within most genres of music, writing a good love song is really hard. Uh, I, 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 it surprised me when I came to that conclusion um, because people look at it as being something simple. Most songs are about girls or guys, mm-hmm. uh, depending on, on on who's singing. Um, but the idea of doing it and not not having it be corny uh, is is incredibly incredibly hard to me. So I, I sat down and challenged sure. myself lyrically and melodically to, to 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 do that before. Where why did you want to write a love song? Was it because of a op, of a are, are you straight? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I, was, I, I just want to, dude. I don't care. <laughs> are you are you involved? I are am. you involved? Yes. I'm yeah. sorry. No. Yeah. No. No. I I wanted <laughs> don't to. Don't be sorry. No. I, I mean, no, yes. don't be sorry at all. Yeah, no, sorry. No, no. Sorry. No. To all I just wanted to say, was it because of a guy <laughs> yes. or a girl? Yeah. A guy or yeah, a girl? No. Right? I, like so, or was it just you're sitting there and you realize how hard it was to write a love song? No, I think it was. I've actually been in the same relationship for over six years now. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Twenty years old, and I was. I had in, had too much. Well, I was under twenty one, so let's say I had had too much soda. Yeah, they're gonna retroactively birthday. arrest you. Yeah. <laughs> so I had, I had too much soda. I was really fizzing out, as they say, on my birthday. Fizzing and I, out. And there's just this friend. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this friend of mine. I met her in high school, and then we went to college in the same city in Pittsburgh. And I was at this party, and I'd been drinking, and I was like, "Hey, you know, I have this huge crush on you. I hadn't been planning on telling her anything." And we've been together ever since. Nice. Um, I didn't remember saying it, but wow. it did happen. It did nice. happen. And the next day, she's like, we should talk about this. I'm like, oh, shit, did I say something to her? Mm. But, but yeah, we've been dating ever since. And throughout the whole Core Dynamo recording process, um, I, I'm more of a social person than her, so I'm gone a lot more than she is. But I was pretty much gone the entire time. And we didn't really see each other that much, hardly at all, because I was just basically living over there recording. And when it was all done, you know, she was just really cool about it. And then we spent some time, just the two of us, and it was just really nice kind of reminder of everything and all the support. So I was like, you know, it'd be nice to like write her like a love song to be like, you know, I, I want to do something for you too. And then it sort of, I was like, what if I just did a whole album based on this? And I thought if I could do it over the course of a year, including like the writing, the recording, and the producing, then it could be like the one year EP following us and we got engaged shortly after that holy so shit like, yeah. nice. for you man so it's all thematic and everything i yeah. mean the, the engagement wasn't part of the plan i mean i'd always been planning on that but just sort of like it was swirling through my head as i got engaged like what like why am i getting engaged what does this mean to me like we've been together six years there's no need to but why am i ready for it so just a lot of thoughts like that i should have went through some of those questions <laughs> i just got married uh, ah, congratulations to you. No, no, wait, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> not just as in I'm no, just that, now. No, I just, I, I, I just was like, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get married, and then we fucking, I got divorced like three years ago. Oh, it, was a, wow. it was a, it was, it was an end of college. End of college, sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's, the, I mean, we were twenty when we started dating, but I was like, I was like, you know, let's not get married at twenty years old. I mean, we never even considered getting married for the longest time, and it became like a joke with our family, like, because we've been together longer than most of my siblings who are married and they're like oh you guys are just never going to get married and i'm the weird hipster sure. sibling in chicago hipster is the word again right yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. but i think at a certain uh, certain point i was like you know i like i just never saw the point of rushing it i mean like we have the rest of our lives to be married so sure. why rush it but then there was a certain day and it was right around when core dynamo came out and i just was spend that time with her i was like you know she's been so cool and she understands that i'm going to be doing this weird musician thing the rest of my life so you know, I'm ready. I'm all in for this. And I think that was, but it, we took our time, obviously, sure. since it was like six years. Sure. Yeah. What does she do? Uh, she works for a nonprofit um, helping low income people, and I help rich people get drunk. Well, so there it is. <laughs> There's that. There yeah. it is. She, she doesn't like money. You don't like money. That's why it's like. <laughs> it's, a, it's a real Sonny and Cher situation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> speaking of money, like, what are this is just I'm gonna pose this question to both of you. All three of us are poor, correct? Yeah, yeah basically. Well, yes. Yeah, well, I am. I'm, I'm I'm living with my parents, obviously, in this nice home, but. I've got fourteen dollars in my pocket, so I've got twenty. I mean, oh, so you're oh, the rich one and here, I gave, and I gave you fifteen of those. You gave me fifteen. Of those. <laughs> I was, was going to say that was I was bragging about right. the fourteen. But. You've got me beat. I think yeah. now that I gave him fifteen of my dollars, I think I only have like nine. All right, so Zach's the poorest one in the room. Yes, sucker, sucker. But uh, the idea of making money at this i'm going to assume that all of us aren't doing this initially for money oh no right 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 Right. yeah what do we what's the plan for all of us what's the i mean do do we want to i mean i mean that that is the goal right are like does everybody walk around thinking like yes i'll be so successful one day or is it just are we just trying to improve our community of art because recently i've been thinking about it and i think i really want to make money I, I think I want to be successful at this enough to for the financial part of it, but I don't think that's necessarily selling out, right? So, what are you guys' thoughts on that? <laughs> making money at our, at our at our art? It'd be great to make money just so I could, you know, quit staring at a computer at my other job all day. I mean, it'd be nice if you could give a hundred percent just towards the music thing, right? Um, I don't know if I want to be rich, but I think it's. Just, I mean, just I like I'm I'm gonna perform no matter what, no matter how little money I make. Sure, but me too. Of course, I think making money there's nothing wrong with that because you just want to be able to focus more time on it. Because but ahead, it shouldn't Jack. be your own reason, right? right. It should be the only reason. The, Liz posed a question yesterday when we were talking with James Abood. Uh, not a question so much as love she, James Abood. Yeah, great guy. I gotta talk great to musician. him. Is he, is, he, is, he, is he as good of a guy as his music is? Or yeah, yeah, is yeah, he? He's cool. It's a stiff competition because his music's great. Really? <laughs> but yeah, That's so, true, too. Yeah, his music's um, great. But Liz was uh, she was talking about her new EP that she's currently in the middle of like mixing and, and whatnot. Progress into simplicity. simplicity. Yes, it's great. exactly. I'm excited for that. Um, yeah. And she was talking about how she feels like she's failing because before she, you know, loses it, before she gets too old or whatever, before life just scoops her away... She wants to release something great, like something, something music changing or world mm-hmm. changing or whatever, something like that. That's 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 her, her her dream isn't necessarily money. Although I imagine if you do that, you do, yeah, you know, earn money doing that. But um, when when she said that, I was like, well, I guess that's a good way of looking at it. But then uh, our last jo- our last guest, Joe Carlson, um, he posts a lot of stuff. He's an actor. Uh, not a musician, but he posts a lot of stuff like uh, just about about actually just doing it and being involved in the process and how that in and of itself is rewarding and bringing these stories and these tales to people are rewarding and yes, you he's, know he's not wrong. You know, it's essentially culture and art is is what keeps history. Sure, know? and 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 I I love that aspect of it, but my mind has been more recently swelling with the idea of progressing specifically as a business and financially Mm -hmm. uh and i've been kind of struggling with it because it's like there's nothing artistic about that and and uh there's there you know and it's it's a strange drive for me to want that and for me well i feel like if you're not struggling with something you're not going to produce good work Damn right. That's kind of true too, man. And I like that. I don't know. I heard this quote once. Someone said, like, you ask, like, an author what their favorite book is or of that they've written or a musician what their favorite album that they are have done is, and they the answer is always the same. It's the next one. And mm. I think that's actually good. Like, not that obviously you want to be proud of what you've done, but I think it's always, it's good. Like, I mean, I don't ever want to release an album and be like, oh, I did it. I don't have to do this again. Like, yeah, me too. <laughs> right. So, I mean, like, me obviously too. you want to be happy with it, but you, you can always think of ways to improve. I think that's exciting. During yeah. the process, though, I never know. I'm always like, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this again. Where the fuck is anything else going to come from? <laughs> it's too much right. work. I'm like, this is no, there's no way. There's no way. And then as soon Working as the, the next album's out or the next piece is out, whatever yeah. the hell it is that people are doing out there, mm-hmm. it's, uh, I'm, always, I, I'm always shocked that I'm able to produce something else. And then I'm like, oh, this is the next project. And this is the next project? <laughs> oh, no, this is easy. It's because you're <laughs> meant to do it. Yeah. I, by the way, I loved Man Called Noon. I was listening to it today. The Knife is probably my favorite song Thanks, on the first man. listen. Thanks, but... man. 
super catchy. I was singing it as I biked mm-hmm. over here. So. Really? <laughs> I love it. Yes. No, I know. You're putting me on the... <laughs> it's great. It's putting great me in, 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 in front of a knife, my friend. And now I gotta, <laughs> now I gotta bike to your album. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You gotta put some work in front of me. Ooh, that'd be nice. That's how I write my that'd favorite nice. melodies on my bike. Yeah, yeah I bike yeah. or I driving or just going for a run. Uh, I come up with with ideas. It usually starts with a maybe not a melody, but a, a an Something. impassioned, soulful idea. I feel like one year EP would be a nice nighttime bike ride. Yeah, for it's sure. Right. It's meant. It's From meant what to I've be. Heard, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a nice, like, quiet thing. Yeah. And it's ironic because I love listening <clears throat> to loud, intense, dancey stuff, like, a, or like intense rock. But yeah. just on a personal level, what I make is folk. I was gonna ask reason. you what I guess who your influences are, which is kind of a now. Nah, go ahead and ask him. I'm kind of interested. That's kind of. A, I, I get what you're saying, but yeah. I am interested. I um I especially love Fionn Reagan's probably my favorite person that no one knows but he's from Ireland yeah. and that, that that sounded hipster I'm just saying a sure. lot of people haven't heard of him. There's the word. <laughs> see, it's such there a funny is. thing that word. It can but, mean anything. It can mean absolutely anything. It that can. Word. But please look up Fionn Reagan. Uh, he's wonderful. He's this Irish folk guy, and he's just I think the thing with folk music I love listening to it, but there's also a lot of crap out there just because like i mean if you're going to be one person with a guitar you have to really do something awesome sure. to be impressive like yes you know like if you're just going to strum and play like a five and a half minute song that doesn't do much i'm just usually bored so i'm pretty critical of it but he is an amazing finger picker and he just builds these great arrangements uh his debut album the end of history is probably my favorite but as for like groups probably like fleet foxes or arcade mm. fire super mm. obsessed with like that large sound of everyone coming together mm-hmm. yeah. and that's that's what i did with core dynamo and that was the plan for the one year ep but i was playing with alex a lot and we are recording and i'm like why don't we just record this just the two of us no other musicians nothing else uh we obviously overdubbed it but other than the first song that has flute and clarinet uh everything is just the two of us so we are excited mm-hmm. about truly making it like Chaz and alex just yeah. the two of us on the whole thing yeah cool very cool um what where did you record it? Uh, in my apartment, in my living room. So I recorded Core Dynamo with my friends Nick and Brian from Francis Luke Chord. I of think course. they helped Liz uh, record yep. hers too. Yep. Uh, and they're great, and they have amazing equipment. Um, mm-hmm. And I spent the whole time going broke slowly, but obviously for a good cause. Right. <laughs> so and, true. And their rates are amazing. Like they even gave me like a friend discount, which was awesome, and they gave me a great product. But I was like, I can't afford to record with you guys again, but I want to mix with you. Right. So I just took notes on how they did it and I recorded myself with my microphone and then sent it to Nick uh, to mix. But yeah, that was the biggest thing is I did it in my so, apartment. <laughs> oh, Chaz, you got to talk to Liz. Uh, yeah. You got to talk to Liz. She's freaking out about the money. She gets, she's, well, um, yeah. she, she, she works so hard, but then she 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 panics a lot during projects. Mm-hmm. I oh, like. I do too. I think because yeah. you want it to, because when you put so much time in it, you're like, I don't know if this is gonna turn out yeah. well, and yeah. it's it's freaky. Yes. Well, I guess is. that's why hers is the progress in the simplicity. It's mm. not the simplicity of simplicity. <laughs> the simplicity, the simplicity, simplicity. Right. the now of simplicity. <laughs> I think I made that same joke to her, and. I could tell she was stressed about it because she didn't laugh because that's the only reason she wouldn't laugh because that's a solid gold joke. Oh, yeah. Right? That, that, <laughs> that I was is like, a, I'm going to choose not to be offended. That because... is a Conan monologue joke <laughs> yes. right there. Oh, thank or, you. Yeah. or at least when Conan introduces Liz, that's a Conan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she is stressed about it. She is stressed But that about is it. the mm-hmm. money thing. I mean, that's yeah. that's. I spent so much time. We recorded. We had a blast recording, Alex and I. And then... We sent it to Nick to mix, and then I started laying out like my marketing plan, like who am I gonna send it to? I need a bunch of people to listen to this, and that's that's so much less fun. And then, but it was cool. I mean, it was cool to see the results. But then yeah. we're starting to like prep our set list for the album release show, and we're playing a ton of shows this summer. Yeah. And then so I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. This is such a great thing to do. <laughs> but sometimes you get so focused on sending emails, like sure, check this yeah. out. Isn't this a great album? There's right. a piece of it I like, the promotional part. As long as I have a something to do with it, and I'm not just searching, constantly yeah. searching for a way to promote. As long as I'm like, like I've found a way to do it. Like today, this is I'm sure fun for you as it is fun for us sure. coming in here. This is a piece of that promotion. Yeah. I, yeah, you know that's fun. But like when you're searching for the thing to promote with, like that that can be be really stressful. Yeah. You know, like why, who's not listening to my music and why and where do I go? Well, and I have noticed that you've been on the grind uh, doing the promotional so stuff. So have I, You've actually. done a lot of interviews. 
and uh, and like and things like that. That's that's how is that working out? Is that it's been really fun. I mean, just everyone has a different <clears throat> approach to it, which is right. awesome. And then the more I talk about, it, the more I get really into like what I've like what idea I have. Like I, I spend a lot of time like how do I want to describe this to people before I send it to them, and mm. that that was fun. So now I'm learning more about exactly where my mind was when I was working on it. So it's been yeah, it's been cool to do, and it's been cool to see people's reactions because strangers don't have to be polite, and so if they like it, it's cool to cool to hear that. Well, I'll tell you, I like it, and we started talking about it earlier about my just taste for folk music. Oh yeah, it's just been in increasing. General. It's, obviously, it's, since you probably have dated Liz. Well, yes, it's been increasing. Obviously, since I've dated Liz, who's uh, also extremely talented. Um, but I, I grew up being a little pop punk kid, uh, thanks to the likes of you know Blink One Eighty Two and oh, shit like I that. I love Blink One Eighty Two. Yeah, Anima of the State. Of yeah, course. exactly. Yeah, man. Uh, and then I got, I just got way into that. So much so that started my own band and got really immersed into that. Well, as I got older and as they got older. A lot of those front men from a lot of those those uh, bands just started doing it, them doing acoustic stuff. Yeah, because yeah. you know you get older and you're gonna start to well, the, fall the, apart. the pop punk uh, kind of turned into the new age emo. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. When did that happen? It, it happened. It totally happened. Right well, around like, brand new. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right around brand new and Midtown yeah. and uh, and you know yeah. And then Dashboard Confessional, mm-hmm. and he yeah. had uh, he Chicago guys like Jimmy Owen, World. Uh, yeah. Owen, the big Chicago guy, Jimmy World, right? And then then, then, then they kind of pushed towards acoustic, right? Uh, so that that actually sparked my interest in yeah. folk, anyways. So yeah. I already had a lot of these like it was it was essentially punk, like the kind a lot. It, it is a lot of the stuff that you are critical of. Uh, yeah, a lot of just like three chord songs just on an acoustic guitar that you kind of get bored with, but. Yeah. But still, to me, I was just like, all right, yeah, I like this now. I'm older, they're older, you know, like that kind of thing. So yeah. it started I, that, that can way. have its place. I just think too often people say like, oh, folk music's boring. And I'm like, you know what? I agree with you. Because sometimes it, it is. Can be. But yeah, like, and that's but my goal. a lot of times, yeah. it's not. Depends exactly, yeah. The and then, yeah, but then you meet people like Liz or yeah. other people around town where I'm like, no, like they're they're going to challenge themselves and make sure the folk is always keeping things interesting. Sure. And for me, my songs are usually two and a half minutes or shorter because i'm like unless i'm gonna do something really sure. unusual i want to just end it right that there punk get, mentality get the right there <laughs> yeah. and, and also like subjectively and, and aesthetically uh anything can be bad to any different listener of you yeah uh it's uh, it doesn't necessarily have to it's none of this stuff has there's no yes and no answer or right yeah. or wrong answer to music uh it's a it's a i like that or i dislike that and there's there can be a song that I write that I'm like everyone's gonna fucking love this song like I get so confident about it and I show somebody and they're like eh. Eh. <laughs> it's not your best and I'm yeah. like what do you mean like yeah. this is everything to me <laughs> and I'm also sure that you mentioned how short your songs are I bet I bet you if it hasn't already happened I bet you somebody along the way is like I wish it was longer yeah I've yep. definitely been yeah. told that it's yeah. fun I I played a show once with this guy who had a bunch of really long songs and he was like. Uh, so how much time do I have left to the guy? Because I had been on before him, and he said, uh, he's like, oh, you got about like eight minutes left. And he's like, okay, cool, one song. And then he went, or if Chaz was still on stage, probably like ten more songs. <laughs> and like people laugh, but I'm like, no, I just, I think like I had something to say, and I said it, and I don't want to repeat myself too much, and I'd rather leave people wanting more and listening to the song over and over again. Than, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I... Like I said, I think that that I, that's my favorite way to do it because it's just songs can drag on. I like I like a couple of long songs. Oh, I like I definitely like long songs a lot. I mean, there's some re- brilliant, brilliant long songs. Like I think Liz got some long ones. Oh, it's beer opening time. <laughs> <laughs> I think Liz got some long ones. I mean, my uh, my friends in France, Luke chords. Their songs are usually like five minutes or so. I just think you kind of have like to earn. Yeah, you have to like earn it if it's going to be five minutes. I just don't want to hear the same thing over and over again. And then just mm-hmm. on a personal level, I usually don't write like writing a third verse. I'm like, okay, I do first verse, second verse, chorus. I don't want to go somewhere else because I, sure. I already sang the verse twice. So maybe that's just my ADD. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I and this was at a moment in my life where I was performing by myself a lot. So I'm like, unless I have someone else to like really enhance it, 
then I'm just going to end it and people will be like, oh, that was a nice song. And I'd rather them go like, oh, I wish I could have heard more of it and then right. just listen yeah. to it again. Maybe. It's, that's the <laughs> showmanship right there. Leave them wanting more. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, where did you, uh, before we move into our next segment, which I don't even know what they're going to be today. I do know one, but um, how did you start playing music? Like what from the very beginning? Like, where, how old were you and that kind of thing? I was 11 when I bought my first guitar, probably 13 when I actually played guitar. It was, I was, uh, I grew up in a house with a ton of siblings and we were all doing stuff and they all got these hobbies and they're all like got social lives because I'm one of the younger ones. So I was like, oh my God, there's nothing to do. And my mom's like, you need a hobby. So then we got a guitar and I basically just told everyone that I played guitar. Like, I was in sixth grade. I was like, yeah, I got a guitar, whatever. And then I met this guy. Awesome. <laughs> nice. Of course, because That's people thought school. I was cool. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I would have thought you were the coolest dude. Yeah. I, I probably would have like, sucked channel. your dick immediately. <laughs> ah, I'd be like, guitar, only. really? If only. if only he was in your school. <laughs> ah, I would have been like, no, uh, <laughs> you can't play guitar. Let Bring me see it. your dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a guitar player, yeah, Jack, yeah, yeah, if yeah. I ever see yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Then, then I met this friend of mine who actually played in a band with me when I first moved to Chicago. So we were friends for a long time, uh, Dan Powers. I met him when I was in eighth grade. And uh, someone's like, hey, Dan, Chaz plays guitar too. He's like, oh, so do I. And I was like, oh, fuck, I got to learn how to play guitar. Because <laughs> he's like, we should, we should play sometime. So then I actually started playing. I started having a ton of fun. And then him and I actually did start playing a lot. We went to college different places, and then we met up in Chicago. And that was my first Chicago band was with him. So cool. I'm glad that I had to be bullied into it or whatever or just be like oh god i have to actually <laughs> that's so funny live up to this but then i ended up having a blast and probably ignoring social life just to play guitar so it started off as a way to look cool and then well, moved into something else. i mean now yeah you've got fucking skill man i mean that oh, your finger you. picking you mentioned finger picking earlier your finger picking is pretty top notch on the record i gotta say thank you sir i think it's i think finger picking is the, <laughs> i think finger picking is a great way to just yeah keep things interesting if it's just the guitar and i really like doing it and that was sort of a natural inclination towards banjo which i got man so i started playing i played guitar for like 15 years because i'm fucking old yeah uh, but i've been playing banjo for like yeah. eight years and i just really and that's when i got more interested in finger picking because they gave me the finger picks on the banjo but i didn't like it because i couldn't tell which strings i was playing i'm like no man i'll just claw hammer this thing but now i just do a little bit of both and sure yeah finger picking is a blast i think i've been playing guitar since i was 20 I'm 22 now, so <laughs> that's two impressive. years, two years. Yes, I it's been a, it's been a hard two years, hasn't it, Tony? Because oh, you look yeah. like shit. Uh, <laughs> you're 22, man. That's not it's not true at all. <laughs> 32. <laughs> so I've been playing guitar for 12 years, but you're I don't 58, think I, I, if any. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. No, Dude, all that all that good songwriting inside me. <laughs> I'm like a, I'm like a Johnny Cash. I, I cover other people's songs. It comes out better because of all the age and grizzle in my voice. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. You're so wrinkled. Uh, the, uh, so do you play guitar for your band at all, or are you just like rhythm front guitar? Band? Okay, yeah. that's awesome. Rhythm guitar, and I I haven't gotten better since. I push myself here and there in different ways, but it's I just don't give a shit anymore. I, yeah. I love writing songs, love throwing the chords together, I love coming up with, with the melodies and the lyrics, and uh, I love structuring a song. But as far as pushing myself on a daily basis to be a better guitar player or to get better at my instrument, that stopped probably about five or six years ago. Maybe even, maybe even longer. But it's good to listen to what you like. I'm more interested in writing songs than being like the greatest soloist ever. Yeah. And I always thought yeah. I would I would love to be in like a rock band or like a dance pop band if I could just sing because I think my I don't want to make cheapen this or anything but I do think like part of my interest in folk is that's so easy I don't really sure. jive well with like electronics or like plug in pedals and shit. Well, so. I would I, I get what you're mm -hmm. saying, but I also think maybe you're being uh, that's some self conscious. Uh, the, the easiness of what you do I don't think it's too easy because I couldn't sit down and do what you do I I, I couldn't do it in the way that you do it. Uh, the, the the way that the way that you do it from what I've heard it's it's something I don't think I could I could ever do uh, yeah you are kind of cheapening yourself a little bit but well, that's no, natural I mean, I, and normal <laughs> that's no, natural love... and normal to, you know I don't well, think you. I don't think what you do is easy I think what you do is 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 
is hard enough, especially and, while singing. And and it's and it's good. Well, that's thank you. I yeah. mean, I do think I do think just electronics is something I'm not as interested in, like finding the right pedals or finding the right sure. amp or anything. Um, like I do think like the learning the guitar is tough, but yeah, just like the plugging in and like okay does the drum sound good versus the guitar and all that like i love like playing completely unplugged gigs and just being bare and that's why i do like about folk music is that's like naked music i mean you really and it is i do think that is tough about is that you can't uh with most folk music you're not using pedals or something so you can't like hide behind effects you have to really lay it bare and be interesting yeah Uh, but Mm -hmm. yeah the whole adding the electronics is just a whole different challenge that i wasn't interested in so i think that's like you're saying you're more interested in songwriting than being a lead guitarist that's awesome because that's its own challenge and then me Mm -hmm. playing acoustic guitar is its own challenge versus like oh if i turn this lot lever i can make this sound and i've just never been as interested in that yeah uh and i'm not that interested in that either to be honest with you that's that's why i got a big band it's a different i love it i love it big band (laughs) And like the people who I record with, they get, they handle a lot of that, and I say that's good, that's bad, and and we argue about it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and those arguments can last anywhere from one minute to two days. <laughs> <laughs> but I would love to just, I I think I would really enjoy to be in like a more rock or dance poppy like band if I didn't have to play anything and I could just show up and dance and be awesome and sing. Well, sure. <laughs> well, but I don't know if I'd want to play guitar in that band. There's plenty of shows. That we'll be doing, yeah. Uh, that that you'll be doing. The opportunity in the next few years will be down the line for you to come on stage with me and sing a song with me. That sounds and, fantastic. Uh, I mean, I just gotta convince the band. But that's there's so many shows and opportunities for us that we're, we're constantly doing stuff. Definitely, there'll, there'll be an opportunity for me to drag you on stage and me I and you can do a duet or some shit. Oh no, not me. No, please no. Okay, fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah. god, you're so embarrassing, <laughs> Tony. Don't please. Okay. <laughs> All right, it, my it, it is my birthday. So. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the song is Happy Birthday. <laughs> to me. To yeah. me. <laughs> but a rock version of it. Yeah. What, what, what a great set list. We're going straight from Happy Birthday into Mary Had a Little Lamb, right into Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. <laughs> Damn. That's a great medley right there. Dude, I'm at a nursery. Crush that. I'm in, Are you I'm kidding, bro? Twinkle, <laughs> twinkle fucking Twinkle Little Star. star. Bitch. How I wonder what you uh, uh. <laughs> uh You know who I've been listening to? I just started getting into him, really getting into him, is Dio. Uh Ronnie James Dio. Uh he's from my hometown and it is very well it's metal, but it is so like theatrical and so silly and like that it's it's almost comical how theatrical and silly it is and how metal it is. His talk of like the religion aspect and like mm-hmm. the devils and demons like the song holy diver is holy diver <laughs> yeah it's like yeah dude it's that that was selling it right there just the like, holy <laughs> diver <laughs> it's a, uh yeah uh, ride the tiger yes. you Damn. can see his stripes but you know he's clean do you know <laughs> what i mean <laughs> Sadly, all right, all right. I do. I made we that can't post. Afford it. We can't afford this. <laughs> yeah, I, I really uh, now we to. owe him money. Uh, damn damn it. it! I made that post. And you guys, you guys might know him. Jeff Brown posted. Oh yeah, Jeff uh, Brown. Jeff yeah. Brown posted. Uh, I made it on Facebook. A post with that with that lyric, and uh, two people liked it. Nick Aliff and Jeff Brown. Jeff wow. Brown and Nick Aliff uh, posted "Holy Diver" at the end, <laughs> and then Jeff Brown posted "No." No, Dio, we don't know what you mean. Because honestly, I don't know what the fuck that means at all. I have no yep. idea what, what you're talking about, man. It is just a bunch of gibberish. It is. But, like, it seems important. It mm-hmm. seems like there is a, like, he's, like, trying to run an exorcism. It's fucking soft. You sold me on it. I have like, to check it out. Man. Yeah. Dio? Dio? Yeah, Dio. check him out. Right. Dude, for yeah. sure. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's epic, and, like, yeah. it's all one groove, and the songs are really long. They're, like, seven minutes long. I'm not opposed to seven. As long yeah. as as long as long you've earned your seven earned, minutes. Earned your seven yeah. minutes. He kind of earns it. It's right. the same kind groove of over and over again. But if it's good, that's okay. <clears throat> so he's the ex-lead singer of Black Sabbath. Oh, no way. So, okay. yeah, when... Uh, Wait, there was a different Ozzie. lead singer than Ozzy. So I when Ozzy left this. for a second, they got in Dio for a moment, and then Dio, yeah. Dio was a solo guy, and he's actually from my hometown. There's a street named after him, and he actually came up with Dio this. Dio Street. He came up with that symbol. This. 
Yeah. Damn, that's awesome. Have, have we talked about this in the podcast? No, not yet. This is the Maloik. What I'm doing is I'm holding my fingers up in the rock pose, right? Suppose, those are the, the, the devil horns. horns. The devil horns. horns, yeah. How dare you? How dare everyone? We're all going to burn in hell before we get the glory of heaven. Do you heaven. ever think <laughs> if the evangelists are right, then heaven is the most boring fucking place in existence? I don't know. But, you like know if, but if they're like, oh, rock music is sinful, yeah. sex is sinful, yeah. like that doesn't sound like this a heaven like I want to be in. In. Like you what, know what we the do evangelists can do? We're gonna live a poor. We're gonna uh, lose a portion of our audience here because we got a big evangelist. Portion. I figured this was an evangelist. Uh, yeah, it's evangelist, you can tell evangelist by this podcast. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I, everywhere. I think the evangelists would have a better heaven if they would all just suck a dick. Uh, Hello. If they all just suck Booyah. a penis here and there, I think they would be over it. Or even listen, that was, that was a joke. I'm nope. kidding. Nope. What you really should do is eat a pussy. Because uh, whatever then, whatever's in front of your face, okay, whatever is there, whatever is there. Uh, yeah, I'm not. A, I, I, I I've I've been very hard on the religious population the past few days. Uh, oh, hard. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> really hard. Uh, I've been hard on a lot of people myself. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I yeah. The past few weeks have been pretty rough. Particularly the religious, because because they just get so antsy about it, you know. <laughs> they just can't. And you know what? I don't have a problem with religion. I don't have a problem with the Amish fucking doing nothing. I don't have a problem well, with some. I think they do a with, lot. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but they could do a lot problem. more if they had electricity. I don't, I, don't, I don't have a problem with the Jews, Christian, and Muslims who just, you know, are just chilling. But it's like spreading love, which is spreading love, which yeah. is great. But I just can't, man. Just the Christians are horrible at this. Just walking into a room, a couple hours go by, then all of a sudden. Hey, have you heard of Jesus Christ? And I'm like, hey, all right. Yes, I've heard of him. I've heard of him. Yeah. Please just go the fuck away, man. <laughs> Please go the fuck away. Uh, but yeah, this is not this podcast. This podcast is about Chaz Hearn. I'm not going to get into this shit right now. <laughs> well, hey, religion can be beautiful. It can be crazy. Like yes. pretty much everything. Yes. Yeah, people have a way of fucking everything up. That's true. Yeah. Fucking people. <laughs> um, that brings us to... <laughs> uh, but we'll, uh, we'll replug the one-year EP, which is... Actually, go ahead and say it now, and then we'll also do it at the end. But where can you, where can we find it? Well, the easiest place is chazhearn.com. That's H-E-A-R-N-E. That's N as in Nancy, for those of you who... He is correct. I was just staring at the spelling of his N's. name. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, so we've both verified my spelling. But yeah, chazhearn.com. <laughs> um, the Facebook would be uh, chazhearn and Alex Gilowitz. Gilowitz. I never know if I'm saying it right. Like, I, like if we played numerous shows and, and I said Gilowitz, and she's like, oh, yeah, close enough. I was like, oh, it's Gilowitz. Is that I, Russian? Polish? G- it's Polish, Polish, yeah. And then Twitter at Chaz Hearn. I don't know. You know, just just look up Chaz. If you Google Chaz Hearn, you will find some fun shit. You'll find it. Also, maybe Google one year EP. That could that could that oh, could that work would, for that you. Would do it. That would probably um, help. And then uh, so now, do you want to do? Do you want to do no. uh, three the three minutes in pain first, or would you like to go oh, uh, three minutes in pain? Let's uh, just get right to the pain. Okay, I'm gonna mix this up. So what this is, Chaz. We uh, I, we started this a couple of weeks ago. This is uh, I wrote this sketch yesterday. He's shuffling him. It's all the same script, am I right? It is all the same script, but different, so char- different characters. Are, different characters oh. are highlighted. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Um. So you my, don't know who's my gonna friend, play which role. Exactly. My friend Milan Wesley Powell gave me a prompt uh, yesterday. Yes, nice. That's the kind of shit we're looking. for. Took me like for. a whole tall boy to get that burp out. <laughs> Um. All right. Uh, his prompt was a love triangle involving a house plant. Uh, this is gonna be weird. I know Milan is one of my he's one of my best friends, uh, but he can he's he's an oddball, and I bet if this was prompted by him, this is gonna be a weird script. I I, I wrote it. Yeah. It's called a love triangle with plants. Yes. Mm. Um. I will be playing Fern. The house plant. Well, let me introduce this real quick. This is three minutes of pain. Well, let's take a three minutes of pain. 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 The second segment yes. we've ever had of this segment. This pain. is the segment called Three Minutes of Pain, where three Zach and Tony, pain. but it's really just going to be Zach who's writing these things. I feel like he's the only one who has time. This is pretty. This is great, Zach. You're getting really good at this. I'm uh, impressed with the typing. Like, what font is this? He this did this great. today. I don't know. It was whatever was basic on. This uh, is a really good font. <laughs> yes. 
Um, I uh, did this yesterday. Yesterday, excuse me. So uh, I'll, I'll be playing Fern. I'm the houseplant. I'm basically the other woman. Okay. Uh, Chaz, who did I give you? I'm Jane. You're Jane. Okay, so you're the wife. Oh, I love it. Okay. Um, and then, so that makes that makes Tony Charles. I ac- accidentally named this person Charles, even though that's it, ironic. Yeah, it's, I you, am Charles your by name? birth. Yes. yes, really. But my parents called me Chaz when I was a little kid. Which, so whatever. I, the fact Chaz that I'm fun. so fucking weird is their fault. Like, <laughs> yep. if they named me Charles and called me Charlie, I'd probably be a stockbroker and you know have no <laughs> soul and all this and say things like, "Oh, you know, we went to Bed Bath and Beyond this weekend. That place is just." A treat. <laughs> you know what though? It kind of is. No, kind it of is. Fun. You know what? I don't want to hate on Bed Bath Man because I love that place. But I dude, I actually kind of do kind of like Bed Bath. Brought no, I do, I do too. I'm uh, just saying, like, uh, I, but that's not like the highlight. But I of understand my, what well, you're saying. Yeah. It's the highlight of some weekends. You yeah. know what? I take back that entire. <laughs> that was and like now I feel guilty. Spit and loads brought to you by Spit Bed Bath and, and Beyond. Bed, Bed, yeah. <laughs> don't you dare insult that store. On our We're show. losing money. We're gonna get sued up the ass. I'm mean, saying, like, Dio. Bed, bath, it's another way you know you've made it if you're getting if you sued. sued. You're like, oh my god, you heard that? Yeah, Can't bad. wait. Can't wait. Yeah, I would send a it. big. They would send us a letter of cease and desist, cease and, desist. And, I, and I would send a like a hundred pages of smiling faces back saying, <laughs> Thanks "No for problem. Listening. No problem. <laughs> I'll take it down. I don't even care. I don't even care." Um, right, okay, I'm so Jane, that that leaves you're uh, you're Charles, which means you you are the guy in and the I'm household. the jealous wife. Yes, you're the jealous wife. You're the guy in the household who is uh, messing with... Uh... Who reads the narration? So actually, uh, Jane, you have the fewest lines, so if you could read the narration in your... I can do that. In your, I'll nu- have in different your neutral voices. voice and okay. come up with a character voice okay, for I'll, Jane. Okay, I'll work on Jane. I'm still getting to the bottom of her. Of her character. Oh, yes. Thank you uh, for elaborating. But this will be this will be a cold read. So uh, um, since you're reading the stage directions, take it away with title first. A man named Charles with a spray <laughs> bottle walks up to a large fern in his foyer. Foyer? The tree is lush, leafy, and green. It's a beautiful fern named Fern. Charles delicately touches a leaf. He caresses it as he lifts the leaf slightly and sprays underneath. Zack. Fern gasps <gasps> and laughs. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. This will take all day if you keep giggling like that, distracting me. I gotta feed you. Take care of you. <laughs> you know I appreciate all you do for me. I know, I know. But you also know full well that without me you'd shrivel up and die. Charles' eyes begin to well up with tears with a slight smile, he says. Yes, Fern. I know. I'd be nothing without you. I'd have nothing to take care of, no one to... I couldn't breathe without you. Okay, okay. Let's not get too overdramatic here. I mean, although it is true that without plant life, converting carbon dioxide and oxygen, <laughs> humans wouldn't be able to breathe, I think you'd be just fine walking right outside that door and taking a big, deep breath of fresh air. You shut your luscious lips, Fern. <laughs> Don't sell yourself short, my love. You are what gives me life, love. Uh, well, what about Jane? Oh, what about Jane? At that moment, we hear the front door open up into the foyer. In walks Jane, carrying way too many groceries than one woman should carry. Yes, Charles, what about me? Oh, hi, Jane. Oh, hi, Jane. (laughs) Welcome Welcome home. (laughs) Charles, don't just stand there. Help Jane with the groceries. Well, Charles, why don't you make yourself useful and take a couple of these? Of course, my dear. My apologies. Charles takes a couple bags of groceries and sets them down next to Fern. Jane walks back to the kitchen to begin putting them away. I'll be right back. Just gotta finish taking care of the Fern. Okay, well don't take too long now. I know how you get distracted when you're taking care of that Fern. Of course, dear. Be there in a second. Dear, Ugh. you know I hate it when you use, when you two use pet names. Oh, my sweet little tree pea. <laughs> I've got to keep up my appearances. <laughs> tree pea. Oh, Chucky Wucky. Oh. When are we going <laughs> to run away together and ditch the old broad? I don't know. <laughs> well, it, it'd be simple if she weren't the breadwinner. Mm-hmm. I would need a sustainable food stores. Have you figured out how to blossom fruit? You know I can't bear fruit, Charles. How many times are you going to throw that in my face? Well, it just seems as if you barely even try. Oh, I try. 
On my days out of the house in the front yard, I talk to the bigger, older trees about bearing fruit, and they tell me that it is just not a part of my genetic makeup, and I've got to give up hope. To hell with those angry old folks! They are just mad because this... Because the area is being repurposed and overdeveloped, and they are about to be cut down. You're perfection and amazing, and oh so special. I believe in you. Oh, Chucky, my love, we will find a way. First, we must escape the rule of Queen Jane in there. Once we are free from her iron grip, we will, be, we will not be able to be stopped. You will find work, I will bear fruit, and we will live free without burden. We will float on a cloud made of true love and organic berries above the sad, unchosen below. Oh, Treepy. Chucky Wucky. I think you missed a spot. Fern waves one of its leaves as if to seductively lure Charles in with his spray bottle. Charles approaches and savagely wraps his arms around Fern and takes a whole branch into his mouth. <laughs> there is moaning and kissing and uh, licking and panting. Uh, 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 in walks Jane. Uh, for the love of God, Charles! Uh, what the hell is taking you so long? Oh, for crying out loud, not again, Charles! How many houseplants do we have to go through? Jane! I swear! This time it's not what it looks like. Fern had just a bit of a spider problem. Yes, Jane, this one spider was just crawling in the most sensitive spot. The tickling was too much to bear, so Charles was trying to catch it. Oh, you shut it, Charles, you lunatic. Charles, I want you out. I understand, Jane. Just let me get my stuff in the fern. Oh, no, go. you and Fern aren't going anywhere. I'll let you pack a bag with a few belongings you have if, and only if, you take that fern out back and throw it into the fire pit. No, Jane! No! No, goddamn you bitch! <gasps> I will not let you destroy another one! Another one? These houseplants are the only friends I've been allowed to have since you've turned me into your little house husband. House plants? How many have there been, Charles? Oh, Fern, darling, you're the only one. My one and only in this moment, and I refuse to let anything happen to you. Don't lie to me, Charles. You are a horrible liar. This pervert has sexually assaulted every houseplant we've ever owned. It's called dendrophilia. That's what my therapist says. Ugh. Charles, what do you think we only have... Why do you think we only have one houseplant? I've had to get rid of the rest. You love them so much that the extra protein from your splooge oversaturates Jesus. them and they turn yellow and die. So I have to throw them into the fire pit. And then I gotta go to the store and buy new ones. Oh well, off with this one too. Jane, you goddamn bitch! <gasps> How dare you paint me in such poor light in front of my love! Treepy, don't listen to her. She's a whore. This is all so crazy. I don't know what to say. Charles, perhaps I would be better off in the pit. Mm -hmm. No! Don't say such things! I am having trouble even looking at you right now. Don't <gasps> say that, Treepy. I am a good man with nothing but love. We can still make a life together. Jane nudges Charles out of the way and grabs Fern. Oh, Charles, please, this Fern is just a Fern. We got it for twenty nine ninety nine at the Home Depot. I'm taking it to the fire pit. I think it would be best if you didn't sleep here tonight. You can sleep in your car, as I know you have no money or friends. Starting tomorrow, you might want to think about getting a job. I saw that Taco Bell is hiring. That would probably be suitable for you. Jane walks to the backyard with Fern. No, Jane! No! I hate you! Fern is above Jane's head as Jane moves to the backyard and fire pit. Thank you, Jane. I do believe that this would be for the best. My life is all of a sudden inside out, and I'm not sure I can go on. Knowing what I now know... Jane tosses Fern into the fire pit. Ugh, off you go! Yeesh, look at those spiders! That's okay. Nothing matters anymore. That's how it ends? The end. Oh my god. <laughs> well, Zach, I gotta tell you, you can write some weird shit. I, I... do not know how to feel about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that was way weirder than the last one. It was super way weirder than the last one. I was really <laughs> invested, though. Yeah, yeah good. No, I, that's did, what... I did believe in them. I, I wasn't a fan of Jane, even though I was reading for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fuck her. You, uh, yeah, you did, you did a great Jane. job, by the way. Stupid you jumped Jane. in. Stupid she Jane. doesn't believe in their love. Yeah. No. 
Exactly. All this guy Charles plant, wanted though. to do was fuck a plant. Just fuck a plant. And put a plant in his <laughs> mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Super weird. Um, I don't know how he would fuck the plant. I could see the plant fucking him. Yeah, oh yeah. Sticking it in places. <laughs> um. There's a lot of things to stick. <laughs> uh, but do you have any theater experience? Um, yeah, I've done some theater. I, I think I'm actually, you know what the thing that turned me off acting was I was, I was in, I, the I was in a theater, <laughs> <laughs> I was in a theater program in college and, uh, the guy, there was this director who was like no bullshit and I actually really liked him and he told me, uh, he tried to cast me in a serious role one time and I did not do great at it. I think I could do better now, but he told me, he's like, you know, this was my mistake because you're not an actor, you're a performer. And what I was a, like, that's probably true. Also, uh, what? <laughs> what, a what does that dickhead. mean? Dickhead. Yeah. Also, Fuck this was my mistake? Fuck him. Yeah. How is that for motivational? That's true, but yeah. like, but I did like, because he told me, he's like, you can get up there and be, you know, Chaz and be awesome I just don't see you yeah. stepping outside into being a different character and I think I don't know if I'm great at being characters but I fucking love making an ass of myself on yeah, stage yeah, so I too. do love performing but I would never be like a character person I'm pretty good at making an ass of myself <laughs> but, on stage off stage but I'm not opposed to performing I fucking love it you did a great job with that material <laughs> that you, you were given well it I was thought. brilliant script it was the script did all the work <laughs> I was gonna ask you what you think of that segment because oh. that's only the second time we've done it. I, I love it. I Careful, think it's his great. feelings are... No, no, no I think no, it's no, great please. because you called it three minutes of pain. I thought it was three minutes of pleasure. Ooh. Ooh. It could be called oh, that. Okay. Take that quote. <laughs> <laughs> take that quote. And add that it quote. into the intro. Also, real quick, I had this thought. What is the world record for longest podcast? Um, Joe Rogan probably holds it. <laughs> uh, we should look that up. Yeah. And we should Why, have how a, long we are should... we going? No, uh, not we're, tonight. No, no okay, yeah, we're, tonight. we're fine. We're totally fine. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're <laughs> Let's cool, do we're it cool, today. Cool. Let's do it today. Yeah. No, you got this, bro. I've got so a anyways, diaper on. We're, we're, we're trying good. To... <laughs> we're going for the world record. I didn't know if you knew that or not. You got a, a what on? A diaper on. A diaper on, man. I got to be prepared, although I'm running out of beer. So that's the main concern. We got a fridge. We got a fridge right over there. Just pop your headphones off and... Go grab one. Oh, grab one. Okay. Um, well, not, now that now that we've announced it, I probably oh, yeah. will. Yeah. Dude. All right. Uh, so while Chaz is doing that, we're, we we got to move on to our next segment, which will be either current events or review. Now we haven't pre prepped either of these segments. Okay. Today so all. current events could be a very serious cur- current current oh, events, but we don't have a lot of time. Right. I know. Okay. So any listeners out there, what's happened in this the past week? week yeah. Two weeks is well. When this was released, it'll be tomorrow. The past week has been horrible. So, but I don't want to yes. go there. Not for this one. We haven't prepped Chaz on it. We haven't even prepped ourselves. Yeah, and, I don't know and, a ton and of we're, information. And we're sort of under a time limit because after this is UFC one, two, three, 200. And then UFC 200. Ooh, current and one, two, events. Two, three, and UFC so I mean, I, what, what, what I'd like to do is keep the current events lighthearted for this episode. Yeah. The current events is going to be UFC 200. We're about to have a sort of get-together. Yeah, for okay. uh, a little party for watching Which, UFC Chaz, 200. Which, Chaz, you're officially invited. Oh, I, wow. I don't yes, know if thank I mentioned you. it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah. So d- I'm what officially we, flattered. What, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. What we just brushed over was <laughs> the Black should. Lives Matter movement and police brutality. But we're brushing that over. We're, we're brushing it over even though we but know that's what we should up, be so talking about. We have to talk We about essentially <laughs> brought it up, but I don't want to leave people like, it's an what are they talking it's about? It's an yeah, important no. movement, let's yeah. just it's say. It's an important movie. We will say this. It's a very important movement, and it deserves a very long podcast. And not, uh, not us not, knuckleheads not, not talking about it. <laughs> not, <laughs> I could say one thing. I'd yeah. say read up on it and use your mind. Use right? your mind. I mean, just, yes. just think about the fact that there are other opinions out there that yes. might matter a lot yes. yes it deserves more than a five minute segment yes uh, absolutely and that, that's why i don't that's why i don't want to do it for before sure today. i agree we can I have agree. Chaz back on like, he could be the person that we do it with if but you not want today. i'd love to if not today want. uh absolutely uh so, so yeah let's do ufc 200 tonight to UFC, the UFC is the current event is tonight and it's i am happening. very excited for it. so much drama has been along with this event yeah uh, uh the main event got pulled well the main event's been pulled a few times it was supposed to be originally three or four months ago nate diaz and conor mcgregor it wasn't that then daniel cormier and john jones stepped up well now uh, john jones got popped three days ago yeah three days for, for steroids and now the main event which means, yeah, three days before the main event. He three days before popped. the main event. Now, Shit. now the main the main event is Nunez versus Tate, uh, and uh, oh really? Misha Nune- Misha Tate versus uh, Amanda N- Nunez uh, because it's the only championship bout left on the on 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 the card. But Damn. the great thing is is that uh, 
they re- replaced everything that was lost with really interesting fights. Daniel well, Cormier I... is now fighting Anderson Silva. Oh, cool. Uh, he stepped up two days' notice. Damn. Two days' notice. You don't Oof. fight that guy. Whatever. You know, <laughs> pretty much. After like <laughs> three months ago, he had gallbladder surgery. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. So without a gallbladder, just going in there fighting a, a guy who's been training for the That's best. That's just less of me to hit. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty much. Uh, but he's, he's fighting a guy who's been training for the best pound-for-pound fighter in the world who just got pulled. So a guy who is bloodthirsty and he's been training for months, it's going to be an interesting fight. Then you got Brock Lesnar, who ex UFC champion, WWE superstar. I was going to say that's the one that they're pushing. I feel like. Yeah, that's they like are the... pushing it, as they should, because yeah. the guy's got a big name. He's a hell of an athlete, but he's uh, he's a decent. F- yeah, listen, I'm using the wrong words. He's not the best fighter in the world, but he was a, U- a former UFC champion, mm-hmm. also a huge star because of WWE. What they're sure. what they're able. Those, and those he's guys. a big mother, big motherfucker, he's a big, big old it. heavyweight. But he's Love fighting him. a guy named Mark Hunt, who is. The hardest puncher I've ever seen in fighting. I hear I hear his son name is Mike. I hear getting punched hurts. Mike Hunt. Mike Hunt. <laughs> Oops. That's nice. It's a sexy name. At least it's yours. Mike Hunt. Oh, it's all Mike. Mike Hunt. <laughs> 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 yeah, so we're excited. My dad's birthday is July 4th. This is kind of a little bit of a celebration for him, too. Yep. Having some of the boys over. He's, uh, he's a big fan, it. Chaz, if you couldn't tell of fighting. Yeah. I fucking Same. love it. I like that your the the fighter we poster fighter is backwards. backwards. Is that a bootleg poster? I, I can't tell. If it, I mean, it's signed. And is it autographed? Yeah, yeah. It's autographed by both. I can't I can't tell if it's backwards. This has been brought up in the podcast before. Mm-hmm. Or if it's a bad copy, like a bootleg copy is what you're... Is, but Wait, it's autographed by who? It's autographed by uh, Mickey Ward and Mickey Ward's brother. His, uh, his name is uh, Mickey Ward, the guy who he plays in the fighter. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes. Yeah. So it's uh, the poster uh, of the fighter. But great the, all fighter. All the text is backwards. Yep. Great but fighter. It looks awesome. Great story. Him and Arturo Gatti are uh, the fights that they've had. Their trilogy is is what really made him a star. Uh, but he was a star before then too. The way he won the belt. Uh, That's a great just, movie. Yeah. The great fighter. Movie. Yeah, great movie. Love that Rocky esque, you know, in the story. Sure. Cinderella Man too. You, yeah, tell, if you tell the story like that, like it's it's gonna be a decent movie. One of Conan you. O'Brien's sisters was one of the sisters in that movie. Oh God, they were some ugly bitches. Yep. <laughs> oh man, they were they could, no they were the I- grizzled Irish. They were the poor Irish. The poor, poor grizzled poor Irish. Irish. Yeah. Just yeah. you know, just. Total. No offense, Irish. I love Irish women. Women. I like red hair and freckles oh, so do and all I. that stuff. Just not the ones that are. There was no. also that Amy Adams like, girl. God. No, ugh, there you what go. an ugly. Oh, right? oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> I couldn't. And she gets in her underwear, and I'm like, ew, come on, cover up, please. <laughs> Amy Adams. For Jesus God's Christ. Sake, have uh, some shame. It was horrifying. Have humility. It was She's horrifying. Well, Amy Adams. Ricky Hatton. Unless Amy Rocky Adams Marciano. is a listener, in case I am interested. Well, hashtag Amy Adams. Yeah, we're, we're going to hashtag Listen, Amy Adams. Let's not. You didn't need to. Yeah, we are all very interested in you, Amy Adams. Let's. <laughs> and, what else is that? You knew. <laughs> you knew that, though. Like, if you were listening to this, you'd be like, I'm Amy Adams. These three guys want to fuck me. Let's hear what they have to say. <laughs> These three guys are in one of their parents' basement. <laughs> <laughs> and Damn she's like, it. that is my <laughs> criteria. That is her criteria. She, she doesn't impressed. need to know. Three guys at once in somebody's parents' basement is her criteria for getting it on. Do you know Mila Kunis was dating Macaulay Culkin for a long time and she's like, I just love nerdy guys. I'm like, where? Hello? I think yeah. all of us have a chance that if Culkin <laughs> can fucking... But he has money. I don't know, Tony. You're probably money. the least nerdy person in this room right now. No, I resent that. Hold on a second. If I if I, I hadn't have, been I, wearing my glasses, I well, would look like a smooth dude. That's true. You do have glasses <laughs> on. That's I have definitely... Age of Apocalypse Marvel all the graphic novels in okay. my room right now. All right, That's I might be the least. Age. I might be the least nerdy person in this room. Then, <laughs> did you see the X Men movie? I did not see the new one. No, me neither. But I heard it's good. I heard, no, I heard actually, I heard mixed feelings. I, heard, I got a lot of mixed feelings on it. Yeah, me too. I heard, I heard it was things. good from my own self, so I want to believe it. I want to be good too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get a chance to see movies anymore these days. Uh, I don't get yeah. a chance to see movies. It's, you know what? You know what I'm doing? Uh, like, what was I? Oh yeah, I was living my life. 
Yeah. Sorry movies. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's exactly what Catch it up. is. What's the next movie you, y'all want to see? I did see we'll Tickled see. last night. Oh, really? That documentary thing? Yeah. I, the preview oh, shows the preview right? sh- like the preview shows everything. I, 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 it's, it's, weird. it's it's not it's yeah I, you know i mean i don't know if i liked it or not how high do you have to get to watch it mm. <laughs> i don't I know if i want to get high and watch it i would say somewhere between yeah. three day old taco bell tasting good and <laughs> thinking that you're on a different plane of dimension somewhere right in in the middle right th- no 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 somewhere between three day old taco bell tasting good and old old james taylor no, what was it? Rod Stewart making sense. Right in the middle of there. <laughs> All right, so I'll go get I'll pain. go get Taco Bell tonight, and I'll watch it three days from now. <laughs> yes, and, wa- and if you're like, if this Taco Bell doesn't taste good, you need to smoke right. yeah, more, more pot, exactly. so, which most of this world needs to do anyways. I think so. That being said, UFC 200 is tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, holy shit, segues. <laughs> UFC 200 is tonight. Uh, but the most important fight in the card, if you know me, you'll know this. It's Frankie Edgar versus Jose Aldo. Dude loves Frankie Edgar. Dude, I love Frankie Edgar. Frankie Edgar. Edgar. It's all love about it. Frankie Edgar. Uh, so after we're done, the three of us are going to go upstairs. We got one more thing to film. But the three of us are going to go upstairs. And Chaz is probably going to learn, if he sticks around, how stressed out Tony gets when he oh, watches yeah. fights. Oh, oh man. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I can't even cope. You don't fight. fight people, do you? Because I don't no. know if I can take He you. stands okay. and yells, though. No, yeah, there's <laughs> standing and yelling here and there. I'm going to keep it to a minimum tonight. I'm very pro-yelling. Yeah. Uh, but it's also, we watch, like... We, yeah, we, there's it, no talking. There's, there's no, no oh, talking policy okay. during the Frankie But Edgar you're fight. allowed to yell? Uh, Tony well, you is. Know. Okay. <laughs> just, just Tony. <laughs> We're all allowed allowed to yell, but it's just like the, the focus for the, for the people that are coming over. The focus is the fights. It's okay. not like, okay. oh, this dip is delicious. I wonder who made it. <laughs> right. It's like, why are we talking about the dip right now? The fights are not. Uh, you know, especially the main card. Like sure. some of the other other stuff. You know, there's sidebar conversations always. Of course. But uh, yeah. yeah. It's a fight house. We like it is. watching fights. I, I, I like yeah, that. I grew up watching uh, boxing matches in particular. Yeah. A little bit of WWF because my brother liked it. but Yeah, I did um, too. I did too. Well, do we mind if we call it? Uh, we can call it. I, I don't think you and I have done anything that we need to review this week anyway. So yeah, but... we'll skip the review. We usually do a review of something. Oh, okay. Um, no, I don't I can't think, we think had. of anything. It's been kind of a good dull week. Which I'm yeah, gonna... we had the Fourth of July, which we actually I worked. Yeah, he, you were, and we did Fourth of July last weekend because it was that weekend, and then it was uh, yeah, basically just kind of like simmered out. Um, we'll do. Uh, let's, let's do last minute circle. plugs. Let's start with you. Start with me. They, we, we usually start from. Yeah, we, we usually start with the guest. Start with the guest. No, let's let's end with the guest. All right. I like uh, it. So I will uh, plug Finley Dunn's on Tuesdays. It's where I do stand up comedy. Uh, Excellent. I've got, I know uh, you do stand up comedy. I do. I'm more learning more. stuff. More. Dude, the that's guy that's been fantastic to hear. Yeah, yeah, more and more. Come on down and uh, it's I'll, good. I'll try to make you laugh. We're yeah. kind of a serious podcast, but we're mostly a comedy podcast. Yeah, yeah. this has been quite serious. Yeah, right. I, <laughs> I was not ready for this. Right. <laughs> right. With my beers. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, right amount of tequila. Gorilla Tango Theater is a play that I'm in. It's opening up July 30th down there at Gorilla Tango, and then come see Daylight at the Neo Futurists, featuring me and my buddy Tony over here. Hell yeah! Um, I'll at be the, playing Sylvester Stallone. The film fest here at the end of July. I believe it's July 28th. And Tony, take it away. Uh, as always, I would like to promote Man Called Noon. Go to www.mancallednoon.com to learn more about Man Called Noon, the band that I am in. Mm. Uh, mm. I also want to promote my friend's band and lead guitarist of Man Called Noon, James Mann and the B.O.T.s, who also, Ooh, yeah. it, who also Zach is in that Damn band. Right. Uh, and Tapping is, on them drum teams. He is the <laughs> drummer. I would also like to also promote Neo Futurist Daylight, fe- featuring all of my friends. Like, yeah, people I went to us. college with, I've known for a decade. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be some a stupid stage reading, and it's gonna oh, be hilarious. It's gonna be hilarious. Yeah. I'll be playing Sylvester Sloan. But more than that, big shout out to Hard Rock Cafe. We're gonna be playing there on August twentieth, which is a Friday. I think so. Sounds Friday. right. Mm-hmm. Uh, sure. Sure. We'll figure it out. Get your uh, ass there. It's a Friday night. It's a Friday night. Come on, come. We come, think. Come look at our name on the marquee. <laughs> uh, and and then go on your way. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there it is. See you later. Before Chaz does it, I want to promote him. I want to promote him 
too. Chaz, Chaz Hearn and Alex Gilowitz. 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 Get pick up their new album, the one year EP. It's a fucking one year free. EP. Name your price. I mean, I shouldn't say it's free. It's name Tip your that price. motherfucker. I mean, you know, give us I mean? a dollar if yeah. you want also, to. Uh, Throw him a bone. Honestly, if you're listening to this podcast and you don't donate two to five bucks. <laughs> Two to listen, don't as much two as you want, to five. but make sure you <laughs> donate some money to the guy who's giving you free music, something that yeah. he put sweat and blood into. It is for free and, and a year, semen. Oh. <laughs> and a year, and a year. That's yeah. what I should have said. I'm and sorry. Keep nope, that. semen too. Yeah, semen, yeah, semen give him too. blood and semen. But yeah, give the guy a little bit of dough. He put a lot of hard work into this, and he's a local musician, and he's not a rich guy, as we discussed. This is all local stuff. So $14. give a little bit of money to him, or you're an asshole. To be honest. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Anything else? Uh, well, we're playing at Shuba's on Wednesday. Super yeah. pumped for that. That was on my stage bucket list. Uh, we're opening yeah. for Baskery, which is a three-piece folk band with attitude. Yeah. Uh, we're excited about that. Then uh, Thursday, I'm heading down to Michigan to play at the Acorn Theater. And then uh, we're playing uh, the Bug House concert series on august 4th in washington square park in front of newberry library cool and august 7th the bucktown garden walk festival so look that shit up on Chaz hern and alex gilowitz facebook nice and just google Chaz hern because Chaz hern.com is full of fun stuff nice fuck yeah Chaz hern.com nice. uh that's it for this week uh, Chaz, you're the best, man. I've, I've enjoyed having you. you. Yeah. Um, I like you too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I actually enjoyed that script quite a bit. So Thank yeah. you. It was super silly. It was and weird, but uh, I'll have a new one next week. And everyone, uh, come on back. We need to sign off. We have we have we a do. child. Spoiler I alert! For... I hope we hug each other when this is all done. I mean, not not. Uh, I well, we'll like, take a, not we'll take all a at once. I'd like a one on one, then another Chaz, one on one. I've made. Th- Three dick sucking jokes. Uh, kind of should be a wink and a smile towards what will be we'll, happening. We'll be hugging. Oh, oh, we'll be goodness. hugging. Also, uh, we need to do a little selfie where we all have arms wrapped around each other. Oh, that sounds Anyways, great. what should our sign off be? Yeah. We, we have one for one, two, three. No, we have one for this. Zach uh, yeah, and Tony. Sayonara. You say ciao. Aloha. Sayonara. Aloha? Is Aloha also? It's hello and goodbye. Until next time. Don't die, because our next one's a good one. What is a... Don't die, Good afternoon, everybody. good evening, and good night. Ooh. Cronkite? No. Is that... Hitchcock? I don't fucking know. <laughs> they're um, the same person. Right? <laughs> I always tell people if they're going That's to work, so don't work too hard. Ooh, I like that. Don't worry. I, I, I say that every once in a while, too. If you're still listening, God bless you. <laughs> well, it's it's, it's got to be God more than that. America. There. It's God bless America. God bless you, child. God bless all the Chodes children out, out there. God bless, all, God, <laughs> God bless all the children out there. It's because it's you, really especially weird. Especially the children. Especially the children. If uh, you've made it this far in the podcast, holy shit. Yeah. Holy shit. What is wrong with you? <laughs> or Actually, be, this is the best stuff I think. It could be a, how about don't work too hard, but don't stop working. Ooh. I like it. All right, I'll say don't work too hard, and you say the second part. Yeah. Ready? All right, everybody, thanks a lot. And don't work too hard, but don't stop working. You're up to go out tonight I'm down if you are too You're carrying all the hate I'm carrying a grudge I got to lose I'll walk to get to the right You're all screams in the night But nothing is returned Just the echo and what it learned Oh, come on, let's just dance tonight Because everyone is lonely in the mud and light Well, oh But you're always mad dog when you're out of money Before we get to the door I long drag a smoke that I roll Because outside the club Everyone's cool and it's quietly smug Oh cool